we can we can definitely do that give the lord thanks for all he's done for us and all the blessings that we've uh, been able to have in this this country that we're living in uh, as we go to the lord in prayer this morning i want us to pray for the people in the ukraine uh, I, I heard that there was uh, I believe 82% of the people were Christian people. Of course, I realize a lot of them are Catholic and in different phases, and I don't know what depth of salvation all of them have, but uh, at least God-fearing. And uh, I, I've been praying, God, would you fight their battles? Because if the Lord fights their battles, they're going to be winners for sure. But I'd like for us to go to the Lord in prayer for them. Maybe you have a special need this morning that you'd like God to move in your life. Uh, and this, the crowd's not that big. We'll, we'll entertain those. Sister Jeanette? Yes. How is she doing? Okay. Is she, is she serving the Lord? All righty. Let's pray for her. Uh, anybody else? All righty, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. And I think it would be wise for all of us this morning as we go to the Lord in prayer to just ask Him to have His way in our hearts today. Uh, it's so easy for us to just put our minds on somebody else or other things. Or, but uh, this heart situation that we have is really what God needs to work on, that our hearts can be touched by Him this morning. I think it'd be good for all of us to say, Lord, have your way in my heart today. Do something for me. Could we join together? Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege that we have to be in church. We thank you, Lord, that you're able to minister and meet every need. And Lord, we lift up the, the folks in the Ukraine today, asking God for you to intervene for them. And you fight their battles, God, as they've uh, in, been invaded and, Lord, the uh, persecution has come. I pray, God, you intervene for them and help them today. And, Lord, I pray for myself that you would help me today to receive from you, God, that your will could be done in my life today. And I pray for everybody here, God, that you would intervene for them and do that, Lord, that's needed in each of our hearts and our lives. We beg for your anointing and your power, God, to be present this morning. We ask, Lord, you touch Sister Vanessa especially and the family. God, that your will might be done in and through their lives. I pray, Lord, that you would heal that one that's sick, that one that needs healing, God, that they would be ministered to today, that one, Lord, that's lost and undone, that you would draw them by your Spirit Lord, that they might be saved and their life changed. And Father, would you give each of us a desire for more of you, the ones that don't have the Holy Ghost, God, that you'd give them a desire to be filled with your Spirit, to overflow, and God, that we might flow out upon this lost and dying world. We beg, God, for your power and your presence to be here this morning as we give you praise and glory and honor today. Hallelujah. Could we give the Lord a good clap offer and just say, Lord, we love you. Would you just speak it out loud and say, Lord, we love you. Oh, yes, you're the one. We magnify your name today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Remain standing, Brother Steve, go lead us in some singing. Thank you, Jesus. Man, let's sing I'm Redeemed. Sweet is the song I'm singing today. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Trouble and sorrow have vanished away. I have been, I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ. 
place is mine All to him I now resign And I have been, I have been redeemed Great is my joy Now is onward I go I'm redeemed I'm redeemed All the way homeward My praises shall flow I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to Him I now resign. And I have been, I have been redeemed. Precious indeed is my Savior to me. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Happy in glory, someday I shall be. I have been, I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to Him I now resign. And I have been, I have been. song I'm singing today I'm redeemed I'm redeemed trouble and sorrow have vanished away I have been I have been redeemed I'm redeemed by love divine glory glory Christ is mine all to him I now resign, and I have been, I have been redeemed. Let's get out and shake hands and greet one another this morning. We're glad to have each of you here, and it needs to be just a little time of fellowship. Amen. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon It may be evening, morning, or at noon The wedding of the bride united with the groom We shall see the King when He comes We shall see the King We shall see the King We shall see the King, see the king when He comes He 
is coming in power, oh hail the blessed hour, we shall see the King when He comes. And are you ready should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say well done or go away? My home is for the pure, the vile can never stay. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King, we shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power, we'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? To crown your Savior, King and Lord of all. The kingdoms of this world shall soon before Him fall. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power, we'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. And are you ready should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say, well done, or go away? My home is for the pure, the vile can never stay. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. Amen. Oh, and that time is getting shorter. Amen. You may be seated. Good to have each of you in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, most of all, it's good to have the presence of the Lord here. Uh, I'm just so thankful that uh, this we, we've got to serve the Lord by faith, but he gives us a touch. Uh, it said that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken these mortal bodies. And I'm glad I get a little tug from heaven every now and then. Praise God. To feel His presence and His touch. Amen. Sometimes He gets, gives me a, a heavier touch than others. He just n nearly jerked me out of this thing. But uh, it's wonderful to be connected with heaven. Amen. This is real, and we're grateful for it. At this time, we're going to come to you for the morning tithe and offering, and give you opportunity to give. And I want to say thank you for your faithfulness in giving to God. And I would encourage you, we talked a little bit in, uh, mentioned it on Wednesday night. <clears throat> it's, this is getting to be some tough times. Uh, this uh, inflation is affecting everybody. And the high, high gas prices. Uh, so I know, <clears throat> I know your money gets a little bit tighter and I would encourage everybody to give some thought to tightening your belt till we get through this, uh, be to where it doesn't become something that's drastic in your life and your family. And it's a good idea for you to put down on paper how you're going to spend your money. Uh, if you just take some time, there's a certain amount of money that we're going to spend on groceries, a certain amount of money we're going to spend on gas, a certain amount of money we're going to spend... If you eat out, that you're going to spend on eating out. And when you uh, get to that limit, that you stop spending. What that'll do, even buying groceries, it'll make you buy things that you really need in the place of things that you just want, the extras that you want. So it'll help you. But whatever you do, don't stop paying your tithes. Because God is the answer for all of us. He really is. He, he's the one that will see us through. Regardless of how tough times get, God will see us through. 
because his bank, there's no inflation up there, and his bank is not busted. So I'd encourage you, be faithful to God with your giving. And I'm not telling you to do that for the benefit of the church. I'm telling you to do that for your benefit. Amen. Because it's a personal thing serving the Lord. The Bible said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And it's your salvation that you've got to work out. The only thing we can do here at the church is try to teach you and guide you, but it's something you have to do as an individual as far as serving God and making heaven your home. And I just encourage you, be faithful, uh, and, and don't just uh, say, well, I'm going to give this or give that. It's wonderful that God did not uh, put a limit, say everybody has to give $1,000 in tithes he didn't say that he put in percentage and if you can be faithful over a little things he can bless you over many amen enough said about it but i just encourage you for your sake that you be faithful to the lord brother wells would you pray over the tithe and offering this morning Just one second before y'all go. Uh, some people might not know what these, there's some dollars laying up here on the communion table. Uh, it, there's three phases of giving. You pay tithes, that's 10% of all your increase, and then you give in offerings according to the Spirit of God, how he touches your heart to give. And then thirdly, we give alms. This is the alms giving to where we have money available to help people that show up, that they got needs, that we can help them and be a blessing to them. So that's what this dollars, and, and it's not talking about put a lot of money, but if you can give a dollar to this, then that will help us to be to where we can help other people. Lord bless you. Thank you, man. Thank you for your giving, and the Lord will bless you for it. Amen. Uh, let me make a couple of announcements here that uh, you might want to get your calendar and write some things down. We've got a work day schedule for May the 7th. We're going to give you uh, a list of things that uh, maybe, maybe by next week we can do this, you think? Uh, a list of things that uh, we're going to try to accomplish uh, at the work day. But if you're not to where you can come uh, May the 7th, and there's some people would say, well, I can't, I can't come that day, that's fine. All you do is just pick you out one of these jobs, and then you can come anytime you want to and do that job. But all of us need to be involved. This is our church. This is not Brother Thomas's church. It's not Brother Gary's church. This is our church. Amen. This is our people. We're together, 
And hey, listen, it needs to be a closeness to grow in us because we're, we're coming to some tough times in the head of us. We need to grow closer together and be to where we care about the needs of one another. And this is our church, so I'd encourage you uh, when you, we get this list that you pick you out some things that you want to do. And uh, you can come on that day and have fellowship for sure, but uh, definitely be to where you can, you can get it done. Pick your job. We've got a revival schedule for April the 24th through the 27th. I want to ask you to be much in prayer for this revival. Uh, <clears throat> boy, I tell you what, we need an outpouring of the Spirit of God upon our church, upon our lives. Uh, these, these folks, <clears throat> some of you sitting here, you have children that's lost. You have friends and neighbors that's lost that you care about. And we need to be in prayer saying, God, would you move on their hearts? And hey, listen, I, I, I told it the other day. I'm so encouraged. This, uh, this preacher said, uh, he told God, said, said Lord, said, uh, I pray and said, you don't never answer my prayers. I pray for these people for you to save them. And God spoke to his heart and said, every time you call their names, he said, I go and touch their hearts. So that ought to encourage you to pray for people that you don't see any change taking place in their life. But that don't mean that God's not moving. Amen. So be much in prayer. And if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want to encourage you today that you say, God, I want this. I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Jesus told the disciples, he told them, said, you go tarry in Jerusalem until you can be endued with power from on high. We need the power of God. Amen. So be in prayer that God would do a, a great work in this revival. Uh, Easter's coming up, April the 17th. I'm excited about Easter. You know, if, if there hadn't been a resurrection, all of this would be in vain. But I just want to report that Jesus, they did crucify him. He did die and give his life and shed his blood. But praise God, they couldn't keep him in the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came forth. He's alive. And I praise God for that. Easter's April the 17th. Invite your neighbor. Invite your family. Family members that don't go to church, go to working on them now to try to get them to come on Easter. Amen. We're going to believe God to do something wonderful on Easter. We have a business meeting on April the 13th. That's on a Wednesday night. We hadn't had a business meeting in quite some time, but you need to make plans to be here for the business meeting. And if, uh, <clears throat> if you're not a member of the church, we want to encourage you to join the church. Amen. We're not trying to keep people out. We're trying to get folks in. So. If your name's not on the register, we want you to join and be a part and be a part of everything that's going on. Amen. Enough announcements. <clears throat> At this time, we're going to dismiss the kids to Children's Church. We love our kids. Give them a good hand as they're leaving here. They're excited about going to church. That was a big part of the congregation. Brother Eddie's doing a great job with the children's church ministry. I mean the bus ministry, uh, getting kids here, and we praise the Lord for that. Amen. At this time, Brother Steve's going to sing for us. I believe Brother Steve is. Amen. Come over here and sing. Man, I'm going to sing, I'll never be over the hill. Worship the Lord this morning. I first heard about Jesus sitting on my mama's knees. All heart and all ears, my eyes fill with tears. She told where he died just for me Though the years have gone by I still break down and cry The story is told to me still Though it may be the truth
truth I'm getting over my youth I know I'll never be over the hill Never be over the hill I'll never be over Calvary For it was there sin's power over me Oh, it was taken away Oh, happy day, overcome by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved and forever I am. Overwhelmed, overjoyed, overfilled. I'll never be over the hill. What was yesterday's marvel too soon becomes today's mundane. The world's greatest story, redemption glory, can never be common or plain. It's a Johnny come lately, been admired so greatly. Every new end that brings a new thrill. There's no current affair can match what happened up there. I know I'll never be over the hill. Never be over the hill. I'll never be over Calvary, for it was there sin's power over me. It was taken away. Oh, happy day, overcome by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved and forever I am. Over. Overjoyed, overfilled, I'll never be over the hill. I first heard about Jesus sitting on my mama's knee. All heart and all ears, my eyes filled with tears, and she told where he died just for me. Though the years have gone by, I still break down and cry. The story is told to me still. Though it may be the truth, I'm getting over my youth. I know I'll never be over the hill. Never be over the hill. I'll never be over Calvary. For it was there sin's power over me It was taken away Oh happy day Overcome by the blood of the Lamb I am saved and forever I am Overwhelmed, overjoyed, overfilled I'll never be over the hill Overwhelmed, overjoyed Never be over the hill. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Stephen. Really, I don't never want to get over the hill. You know what that song was talking about? Get up, get past loving Jesus. Amen. And being thankful for what he did for me. Forgiving me of my sins and saving my soul. Oh. My wife and I, we pray, we have a devotion and we pray every day and we try to make it a, a, a constant prayer. We try to call all y'all's names out uh, in prayer. <clears throat> Sometimes we miss you, but we put you in a group if we do miss you. Uh, but we try to call your names out in prayer, ask God to bless you and help you hold you up day to day. God, not get his hand on your life. But uh, uh, one of, uh, part of my prayer is Lord, help our church to grow. Help it to grow in number and help it to grow in righteousness. But uh, I just thought <clears throat> they saw in a lot of, and I, don't want, I want to be careful here not to be offensive, but there's a lot of folks that they do a lot of fasting, or spiritual fasting. They try to survive on one hour a week. 
of being fed. That sunk in. Uh, it's doubtful you're going to make it if you don't get more than that. So I'm encouraging you. We have, we have a wonderful class on Wednesday night that you can ask questions, you can give input, and take out of your schedule and come and be in the Wednesday night service. And then on Friday night, we have a wonderful service here. Worshiping the Lord and loving God and giving our, our preachers opportunity in the church to come and minister. So uh, I would encourage you. And sometimes <clears throat> I, I, I was raised in a time, I know I'm taking a little bit of Brother Gary's time, but he can, he can take it on to 1 o'clock if he wants to. Uh, I, I remember uh, growing up in hard times and a lot of times we didn't have a lot. We had uh, practically always had potatoes to eat. Mama could fix them things so many ways until it was funny. Uh, but uh, we had things. Sometimes you didn't necessarily get all. It wasn't like going to Cheddar's or, or uh, uh, where's another good place, y'all, that folks like to eat? Uh, Outback. Uh, <clears throat> it, it wasn't like picking your own restaurant, you know. It was just what was put on the table. And on, on Wednesday night and even Sunday morning and, and uh, the times that we have church, sometimes it may be, well, they didn't do exactly like I wanted them to do. But you can come get you a mess of God anytime. Amen? And we need that. So I'm not scolding. I'm encouraging. You need this with these troublesome times coming up on this world. And... Uh, I just thought if Putin mashed that button, that nuclear button, tomorrow could be the awfulest day that America's ever had. And we're that close to it. So I encourage you, get all you can. Be faithful to the house of God. Be faithful to read this book. Be faithful to pray. And let's get close to God. Brother Eddie is going to start having a, a prayer meeting, uh, start the prayer meeting back on a Monday night, and we're going to start praying. Uh, anybody that wants to come pray, uh, I think it's anybody. It's not just the young people, is it? Anybody that wants to come pray. And, hey, listen, don't feel like you've got to come and spend an hour, two hours. You may want to do that, and if you do, you're welcome to. But if you just want to come and pray 15 minutes, you know, at least you've showed God, Lord, you're the one that's important. Amen? And that's what we want to do. We're going to get close to the Lord around here, and we're going to see a mighty move of God. I can just tell you it's a coming. There's a change of coming. Amen. I may preach that one of these days soon. Brother Gary, come preach to us. Well, I am thankful that you chose to be in the house of the Lord this morning, and I'm going to give you um, what I believe the Lord has been um, mulling in my spirit for the last uh, about four or five days, and um, it kind of all has come to a culmination. I had been uh, reading and studying and then Wednesday night um, in our class, and it really wasn't even uh, uh, the th main thrust of the, of the lesson, but there was one scripture that we read in Exodus 2 and 21 where the Bible just simply says, And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and um, he gave Moses... Zipporah, his daughter. And um, what really kind of landed in my spirit about that was that Moses was content to dwell in the wilderness. And Moses had lived in a palace. Moses had had, had servants, no doubt, to bring him the finest that there was to offer at the time. 
And uh, he lived a very luxurious life as a prince in Egypt. And he had the niceties that, that life could, could give at that moment in, in history. But uh, something got stirring in Moses' spirit. And uh, he, he saw the injustices being done to his people. And he wound up uh, in a heat of passion or whatever. He, he took the life of a, an Egyptian man that was be, uh, being cruel to a Hebrew. And uh, the word got out and he had to flee for his life. And uh, he went into Media and uh, there he, was, he found himself at a well and... Uh, these seven daughters had come to water their flocks and the word got out and they got to talk and whatever anyway uh, as it was God uh, moved in the heart of this man and uh, Moses was content to dwell there and that kind of started a, a thought process in me about uh, the, the, the first of all, the need for Moses to be in the wilderness. And, um, you know, it, Moses would have never been the deliverer had he not spent the time in the wilderness that he needed to spend. And uh, we would love to avoid the wilderness experience in our lives, wouldn't we? We would love to take a, take a detour and not have to go to hard times. We would love to take a detour and not have to go to loneliness or go to uh, where there's not the social interaction and where there's not the, uh, the, the pleasantries coming our way. We would love to avoid all that. But God saw in His wisdom, in His foreknowledge, it was necessary for Moses to go through that experience in order to build his character and develop him so that when the time came, he could step on the scene and be the deliverer that was needed. But all of that would not have happened if Moses would have been discontented in the wilderness. Right? Most people, in their, they find themselves in situations that are difficult, and they can never calm their spirit to a point and to a level where God can do what He wants to do. All they can do is think about how I'm hating it here and how I wish I wasn't having to go through this, and they spend all their mental energy, instead of being uh, letting God work on them, they just spend their time thinking about how I hate my life. But Moses was content to dwell with him. And then I, that sparked something else about, you know, in this spiritual battle that we're facing. And, and you're here this morning because you want to go to heaven. You want to be right with God. You're here because you uh, have made a conscious choice that you want to go towards the Lord. But many are not here that should be here. And I begin to think, what do we really have as a church to offer people? And when at, the, at the crux of it, when you boil it all down, really there's only two things we have to offer people. We cannot compete with the world with entertainment. We cannot compete with the world with, um, you know, a lot of churches they try. Uh, you know, a Sunday morning service is more like a concert than a, than a church service. But we can't compete with the Super Bowl, with uh, sports events. We can't compete with uh, the money and the giveaways and, uh, and all, all that. We, we can't entice people with all of that stuff. What do we have to offer? We have two things to offer. And I just say this as a pastor to you this morning. We have love and truth. That's all we have at the end of the day. We have love and truth. Now, love will make you do a lot of things. Love will make you go the extra mile. Love will make you want to give your very best. Love will make you do a lot of things. But, but really, all we have is love and truth. And I thought about this. I said, and, and by the way, I'm getting to my message. This is just kind of leading up to why I'm preaching to you about what I'm fixing to preach to you about. You know, when, when a child is born, we shower them with love and we hold off on the truth. And then as they mature, we give them truth 
And it seems like the love is pulled back. When people are adults and they're lost and we're trying to get them to come to church, we hold off on the truth and we shower them with love. And really, in, uh, in the scheme of things, truth is handled better when people are young than when they're old. But irregardless, we need to find the balance between love and truth and uh, give people what they need and when they need it. I, uh, and here's the message. When I was thinking about Moses and being in the wilderness, the question came to my mind, well, what kind of a place did Moses find himself in? He found himself in a situation where it was unfamiliar. It was uh, it seemingly destitute. It, it didn't have all the, the mall and the, and the lights and all the glitter of Egypt. It didn't have all the, uh, the, the movings and interactions. It was a lonely place. But if you are in the will of God in the wilderness, you're in a good place. And that's what I want to preach to you today about is being in a good place. Being in a good place. Being in a good place. And I knew kind of the concept of what I wanted to talk about and I had several examples. Matter of fact, I wrote them down in my truck while I was driving this week. I, well, not while I was driving. I wasn't writing them down. But whenever I'd stop, I'd write some things down. And, um, but I didn't, it didn't come together until yesterday afternoon, my dad and I, or yesterday morning, my dad and I was out visiting. And uh, we went to a person's house that I just had a burden for and have had on my heart and my mind this past week. And went to their home, and they weren't home, but his wife was home. And um, she, uh, we was, I was talking to her, and she's had some, some health issues and various things. And she said these words to me. She said, I'm in a good place now. And it was instantaneous. The Lord said, that's what I want you to talk about. It's in a good place. A good place. I'm going to do something I don't normally do today, but I asked permission, if I could, to use Brother Robert and Sister Bianca in the, in the message this morning. And uh, as it relates to this being in a good place. And lest I forget it, and lest I move over it, I'm going to talk about that now. Part of this message is about you putting yourself in the right place to where God can have His way in your life. When I was thinking about this, they came, they came so strongly to my mind. Robert and Bianca and the whole Bowman family, and by the way, brother, uh, the rest of the Bowman family aren't here this morning. Hopefully they'll see this on, fa on Facebook or YouTube and they'll, they'll know they should have been here. But uh, for years, we have worked with the Bowman family. My dad and I, uh, for the better part of a year, went by their house every Saturday and knocked on their door and invited them to church. And they at first would come, kind of like the Sortellas over here. <laughs> They'd come real sporadic. <laughs> but they got to dabbling and they got to come in a little more. But they never would be faithful. They never would just make that commitment to come every week. And um, so finally, uh, my dad said, I'm done. I'm done. We ain't going back. We, they, they, we, we've done given all the effort we're going to give with them. But like Jeremiah, we, didn't, uh, we, we couldn't stay away, and so we kept going. But they would come, and they wouldn't come all the time, but they would come. And in the process of time, and God in His mercy, He allowed trouble to come their way. And we've not told this story publicly but uh, little Olivia, has, has, she has some physical issues. She has some, some uh, problems with her bones and she bruises easily and what all. And, and they had taken her to uh, a doctor's uh, visit and the doctor, I guess they noticed bruising. And I, I don't have all the details, but anyway, child services was called. 
And uh, there was accusations made that they were being abusive to this little baby. And they took their child away. And Sister Bianca told me the other night, she said, I, I wanted to die that day. And I could only imagine. Could you imagine? Brother West, could you imagine if they were to come to your house and say, we're taking your kids away? Unthinkable. But Robert and Bianca, they knew where to go in that time of tragedy. And the Lord saved them. They got truly saved. They're, and if you cannot tell the difference, they're not, they're not in and out anymore. They're not fickle. They're, 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 they're here. And they're here. I mean, they're here, here. They gave it all to God. And they didn't really have much choice. But they gave it all to God. Now, here's the point. As I said to them, if all the association that you would have had would have been folks at the bar or co-workers, and you didn't have a connection with God or God's people, and you wouldn't have known that you could cry out to God in times of trouble, then where would you be today? They were in a good place. Even if they were not in the best place, they were in a good place because they had heard that God will answer prayer. How, how many months has this gone on, Brother Robert and Sister Bianca? About four months. I, uh, I want you to stand and I want you to tell the folks what you told us Friday night as what happened just this week. Um, so I got a call from my lawyer um, that he got an email saying that as of April 13th, they're going to close the case. And it's very unheard of. Everyone's shocked. They're like, this is the fastest case that they've closed. And we tell them that we're like, that's God. Like, how do you think we're getting through all of this? And, you know, they just, they're just like, oh, okay. But, you know, we know the truth. We know God it can do anything. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, I ask you this question. Were they in a bad place when that happened? Or were they in a good place? Because I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters. If it took that to get this family in solid with God and make heaven a thousand years from now, they'll rejoice when they think about that day that you wanted to die and how God turned that around and used that for your salvation. Amen? So I'm just telling you this morning, brothers and sisters, it's important that we find ourselves in a good place. And many times we do not know that the place we're at right then, it seems hard, it seems unbearable, it seems destitute. But God can use that place to be the best place for you to be at. So that's the message in a nutshell. If you want to leave now, I won't hold you till one. But that thought spurred a lot of thoughts as to what is a good place. In Psalms chapter 91, in verse 1, if you would please stand for the reading of God's word, and let's read together. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His, tr His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Amen. I want to talk to you today about finding a secret place. It's a good place. I'm in a good place today. 
because I have, bought, I have found him. Heavenly Father, make me a blessing today. Strengthen your people. And let us leave here being determined that we will find that place that we can say like that lady yesterday, I'm in a good place. It may be a difficult place. It may be a lonely place. And from the world's standards, it may not be a desirable place. But Lord, if it's in your will, it'll be a good place. And so I pray this morning that you would move us closer to you and that we could rest in you as our refuge. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The first point of the message is this. The house of God is a good place. David said in Psalm 23 in verse 6, that famous psalm, amen, he said in verse 6, he said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, how could David say, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Because David knew that in the house of the Lord is where he was going to be. He said, praise awaiteth thee in the sanctuary, O God. Amen. I have been building up my praise throughout the week. That's the reason many times we have opportunities. That's the reason I said, Sister Bianca, tell us what happened. Amen. Because she had praise waiting up for the sanctuary. She told me the other night, she said, I almost called you, but I wanted it to be a surprise. Amen. Praise is the time to give it in the sanctuary. So when you enter and just gates and into his courts you do it with praise the house of God is a good place to be because it's a place where we give praise it's not only a place where we give praise it's a place where we receive instruction the house of God I mean Jesus valued going to the house of God Jesus himself his ministry began in many ways, in the house of God, when the, he stood to read, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And amen. And he, 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 he valued coming to the house of God. This idea that I don't need church, I don't need together with God's people, that's false. You need the house of God. You need the people of God. The Bible says as iron sharpens iron, so a man, the, count, his, the, the countenance, his countenance of a friend. So you need truth tellers in your life. You need people that you, the Bible says work out your own salvation. The church is the place where we do that. We develop relationships with people. We overcome their uh, idiosyncrasies, the things that aggravate us about people. We have, to, we have to learn to be patient. We have to learn to pray for those that, uh, you know, the church is not perfect, but the church is a good place. I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. I thank God. Amen. I thank God that I was raised in the house of God. Amen. I can tell you so many stories. I can tell you things. Amen. I was shaped and I was formed in the house of God. Amen. My foundation was found in the house of God. The house of God is a good place. Amen. If you find yourself in the house of God, you can say, I am in a good place. I'm in a good place. Amen. Church attendance in America is at an all-time low. Church attendance after 9-11 went up, uh, they said, 300%. And within one month, it was right back down. Why? Because prosperity, it causes people to have this illusion that they don't need God. But brothers and sisters, we need God. The house of God is the place where we learn our need for God. The house of God is where we learn instructions of how to live for God. And it gives us a platform to work for God. Amen. The house of God is a good place to be. And you might say, well, Brother Gary, you, you would obviously say that because you're the preacher, <laughs> right? You're biased. No, it's not because I'm the preacher. It's because I'm a saint just like you are. I'm a believer just like you are. I'm striving just like you are. I mean, you keep me praying. You heard about the pastor. I mean, no, no, the, the man that, that, that got up one Sunday and he said, I'm not going to church. And his wife said, you're going. He said, no, I'm not. I'm not going today. And she said, well, you've got to go. He said, why? He, she said, because you're the pastor. <laughs> hey, don't get it messed up. Hey, the preachers don't always feel like it. 
Preachers don't, preachers are, uh, they're very flawed people. Matter of fact, some of the most flawed people. But the house of God is where we get help. Amen. The second place that's a good place to be. I'm in a good place when I'm in the house of God. I'm in a good place when I find myself in a place of hunger. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. Uh, the, the, The Bible said about Jesus, after He was baptized and the Spirit drove Him in the wilderness to be tempted or tested, and he fasted 40 days, and afterward he was and hungered. It's a good thing to hunger for righteousness. This lady that I spoke, about, spoke of just a few moments ago, and, and Dad, I would say to you, it has encouraged me to know that God is working whenever I pray for the lost. Amen. I said to her, she, she began to tell me something that had uh, some news that had just come to her husband about another person, another one of his friends passing away and, and uh, how that that had devastated him. And I asked her, I said, do you ever wonder why God put a preacher to come by and knock on your, your door today? Does that ever strike you as odd that you could live for years and years and nothing ever happened like that and then all of a sudden God puts somebody in your life to come and reach for you? And she began to cry. She said, I was telling my husband just this week that we need to go to church. I said, that's a sign that God loves you. And He's putting a desire in you for him. He loves you so much that he put a burden on my heart to pray for you. I got to be honest with you folks. Sometimes it does feel like we're getting on folks' nerve. I, I was teasing you guys a while ago. We get these, you get these phone calls and these texts constantly. Are y'all coming to church Sunday? Y'all coming to church Sunday? And we get to thinking to ourselves, they don't want to hear from us. They, 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 they're, they're sick of hearing for us. You know, my dad said of some folks that he went and visited this week. He knocked on their door. My, wife, my mom stayed out in the car, and uh, they peeked out the, the window, but they didn't come to the door. And the preacher many times feels like I'm just doing nothing but just a, a bother. I'm just a bother. I'm just a bother. But I'm going to tell you something. When you find yourself hungering for God and the flesh don't want to do it and everything within you, the devil's telling you, you can't, you can't make the change. You can't make the life change. You can't make that new start. There, you got too much baggage. You got to do this or do that or the other. I'm telling you, when you find yourself, if, if the slightest bit of hunger for God, that's a good place. That's a good place. Amen. And whatever brings you to that place was a good thing. The Bible said it's the goodness of the Lord that bringeth men to repentance. It didn't say that there was an easy road to repentance. But whatever brought you to repentance was a good thing. So I've said to Brother Robert and Sister Bianca many times in the last few months, this was a good thing. You don't see it right now, but one day you'll see that this was a good thing. Amen. It's a good place to be when you find yourself hungry. Amen. And the third thing, it's a good place to be. You're in a good place when you're in a place of growth. When you're in a place of growth. I I, I want to read you some scriptures here in 1 Samuel. Samuel found himself as a boy, as an infant, given to the the man of God, Eli. His mother could not have children, and she came to offer their yearly sacrifice, and the, the man of God noticed her that she was weeping, and he thought that she had been drinking. He thought that she was intoxicated or something. 
And, uh, and she, he came to try to rebuke her, and she said, no, she, that, that's not what's happening. You know, she was burdened. She wanted a child. And he prayed for her, and God gave a child. And the deal that she had made with God, if you give him to me, I will give him back to you. And she fulfilled her commitment to God in giving Samuel to do the ministry in the house of God or the tabernacle. And in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 21, the Bible says, And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. So what had happened is, is God didn't only bless her with Samuel. She had three other sons and two daughters. But the Lord found it noteworthy to attach and the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. When you find yourself in a place of growth, you're in a good place. And and, and by the way, let me just say this. What Brother Thomas was encouraging you about attending all the services and, and, and stepping up your game, so to speak, hey, that's, that's calling you to growth. That's calling you to growth. When you see all this stuff happening around and the need is great for you to grow spiritually, you need to bear down and grow. Amen. Uh, we talked about it as a family. We've, and I'm, a, I'm ashamed to say this publicly. It's humiliating. But we talked about it as a family around the first of the year. We're going to read the Bible out loud as a whole family together all year. And we've done that. We're on track. I was in a Bible reading program already. And I have kept up on that myself personally and along with my family. Why? Because the times are demanding, Brother Eddie, that I grow. The status quo ain't going to get the job done. I must grow. And it doesn't have to be that just because you get 21, you're done growing. I told Brother Dave Norgren, and Brother Dave's in Nashville uh, this week. He's had a conference he had to go to for his work. But uh, here a few months ago, Brother Dave came to me, and they were right in the middle of building a house, and and he had... uh, Bought out a partner and he was back at work and his life was just very, very, very demanding. And he was running out of time. Days were getting shorter and shorter and he came to me and he said, Brother Gary, he said, I think I need someone else to take care of Wednesday night for a while. And I didn't say nothing. I didn't say anything. I just waited. And he said, Brother Gary, I retract that. He said, just it coming out of my mouth don't sound right. I should not give up on the things of God. If there's something else that needs to go away in my life, it's something else. And I said, Brother Dave, you don't know how happy I am to hear you say that. That's a sign that you're growing. Brother Dave has come to this church for years, and he has taken on a growth spurt in the last two years. Amen? Hey, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. You need to be better a better Christian this next year than you were this year. There needs to be notable things that you can mark down and say, hey, listen, I, 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 I reached harder. I, I strove. I, I desired to pr- pray more. I, I tried. I, God has made some improvements in my life because I want to grow. And I know, I, 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 oh God, please help me. I try to preach encouraging messages and I don't want to be so heavy that you don't want to come. But it's the preacher's job to, job to try to pull you towards God. And we don't have but a very limited time to try to talk to you about things that are so important. But I'm telling you, if you will grow spiritually, if you will decide I'm going to put myself in a place where it forces me to grow, Become accountable to people. Stand up publicly and say, I'm going to read the Bible through this year. It's on record. It's on video. I've got to do it now. As long as the devil can keep you in the shadows, as long as the devil can keep you at the status quo, he's got you. 
because life's demanding more. You know whose faith is being put to the test right now? And folks in Ukraine, their, ta- their faith is being put to the test. And it would behoove us. It, we would be wise. The Bible said a prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself. It would be very wise for us now before the bombs come to America. It would be very wise for us to say, you know what? It'd be right, it'd be right about now. It'd be a good time for me to really get serious about serving God. Amen. Right about now would be a good time. Uh, you guys don't even know how my heart jumps up and down to see you guys more faithful in the, tr- in the house of God here. Amen. I'm in a good place. Am I in a safe place? Am I in a place that I will be sheltered from all the trouble? I don't know. But I'm in a good place. Because I'm in a place of growth. In 1 Samuel 2 and 26, the Bible says, And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. He grew before the Lord and he grew in favor with the Lord. Amen. I like what Brother William used to always say. It ain't fair. It's favor. And I would a lot rather have favor than fairness. I would a lot rather have God give me favor. Hey, did you know God can put you to the front of the line when you really ought to be at the back of the line? Amen. God can open doors for you. He grew in favor. He grew before the Lord and then he grew in favor. And then in one more verse in 1 Samuel 3 and 19. The Bible says, And Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. What did I tell you that we have to offer people? Love and truth. Did you know those are the two things that are guaranteed to succeed? Huh? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, Charity never faileth. Hey, I'm going to keep dripping on them. Amen? Uh, They may hate me, but I'm going to keep telling them I love them. Amen? I told a man a few months ago, and I've had at least four or five people, four or five truckers tell me that guy is weird and he's angry. He's a bad man. I went out to his house. I knocked on his door. I went in and I talked to him and I said, I'm going to be your friend whether you want me to or not. Three weeks ago, I was at a quarry, and I didn't know where to go. I'd not been there in a long, long time, and I didn't know what channel is on. I didn't know where certain product was. That man was in the office when I walked in. I asked him where this material was, and he told me. But I, I mean, the, the, the instructions was kind of vague. I got back in my truck. I went to go to get the material. He comes on the CB, he calls out to the loader man. He said, my friend's coming over there. Would you show him where this is and help him? (laughs) Amen. Now, don't get it twisted. You can't make everybody your friend. But listen, brothers and sisters, love conquers. And somebody that's willing to go the extra mile. Somebody that's willing to go back and and try again and try again. Hey, it's a good place to be when you're in a place of growth. It's a good place to be when you're loving people. And love conquers. And then the Bible says that Jesus said that His Word would not return void. Brother Robert, you preach out on the street. You don't get to see it the end result of your preaching but you can know that it's accomplishing something amen and Samuel grew and none of his words failed does that mean that everybody that heard his words came into alignment with the truth no but it meant they had the impact that they were intended to have hallelujah I'm in a good place today I'm in a good place I'm in a place of growth. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 80, Luke 1 and 80, this is talking about John the Baptist. 
You got it up there, Bryce? And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. He waxed strong in spirit. He was in the desert. I mentioned this Wednesday night, but leaders have to be okay with being alone. It's a lonely road to walk this road. The Bible says great and wide is the way that leads to destruction. And many are going therein. But it's a straight and a narrow way and few there be that find it that leads to eternal life. So brothers and sisters, if you have to have pats on the back, if you have to have you know, the accolades and people bragging on you and stroking your ego, if you, if you have to have... The desert is the best place for you to be. Amen. But let me tell you what happens in the desert. You learn how to fight lions and bears. Amen. You learn how to be strong in those times when you find yourself all alone. You learn how to get on your knees when nobody's looking and cry out to God. Amen. You learn some things. It's a good place. I stand up here today and I say, I'm not signing up for trouble. I'm not holding the flag and said, bring it on. I, I don't know. I don't want it. But if I find myself there, I can know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Amen. Brother Daniel, I'm praying you don't have to go over there. I'm praying that that man does not push that button. Brother Daniel's in a, in a part of the military where he would deal with that sort of cleanup. He would deal with that sort of uh, uh, consequence. And I'm praying you don't have to go. But if you do have to go, if God is leading, it'll be the best place for you to be at. Hallelujah. We are moving along. and It's about 17 till 12. And I will promise you I'm not keeping you till 1. It's a good place to be when you find yourself in the house of God. I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place when I find myself hungry for righteousness. I'm in a good place when I find myself in a place for growth. And fourthly, I'm in a good place when I find myself in a place of humility. Rehoboam was king. And the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 12 and 1, and God had pronounced judgment upon them because they had uh, walked away from God. But in 2 Chronicles 12 and 1, the Bible says, And it came to pass when Rehoboam was established, the kingdom had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself. He forsook the law of the Lord and of all Israel with him. But then down in verse 12, the Bible says, And when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord was turned from him, that he would not destroy him altogether. And also in Judah, things went well. Amen. The best place you can find yourself is in a place of humility. Amen. When you humble yourself, you're in a good place. Amen. The devil's telling you people are not going to respect you anymore. You've lost all credibility. You've made a fool of yourself. Don't you dare get up there and act like that you don't have it all together. Don't humble yourself. Amen. Because he knows that pride is deceitful. God hates pride. Amen. When you can humble yourself, you're in a good place. God was, he, he was determined that he was going to destroy them. But the king humbled himself. And God turned. God changed his mind. Fifthly, you're in a good place when you find yourself a place to labor. Can I just tell you something? Work is not a four-letter word that's bad. It's not a curse word. Come on, folks, say amen. Did you know that there was work before the curse? Did you know that Adam 
and Eve was commissioned to tend the garden before sin came. Work is not a consequence of sin. And we're not going to go to heaven and just sit up there and sing come by y'all. And all the, just listen to the cherubs sing. We're going to have to take, there's going to be work. In Matthew chapter 20 and verse 3, Matthew 20 and 3, the Bible says, And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. And again he went about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle. And said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? And they said unto him, Because no man hath hired us. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard. Whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. The Bible says it's a good thing for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. The Bible says study to be quiet and work with your own hands. I was just having this conversation with my boys this morning. The difference between Republicans and Democrats and, 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 and various things and why we're, we're where we are today. And, and how in the world could you, could, you, could you look around and see all this stuff? And, 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 and not in every case. Not in every case. But I've said to you many times, you're either a, a taker or a giver. You're either a producer or a consumer. And you need to work. And if you're busy working, you ain't got time to get up in other folks' business. It just don't leave a lot of time for you to, to get out and do a lot of protesting and throw big bricks through windows and blame the cops for everything. It just don't leave a lot of time for all that because you got things to do. I, for the life of me, do not know how anybody could say they're bored. There is more to get done than I can find the time to do. Amen. My dad taught me this years and years and years ago. My dad, to this day, every night, he writes him a work list for tomorrow. I think he still does that. Do you still do that, Dad? Pretty well. He is getting, he is starting to get into some retirement time. But, hey, you know what my dad did this week? He's 83 years old. He decided he's going to dig, dig a, a stairwell. He's out there with a shovel digging a stairwell. I said, Dad, they make equipment for that nowadays. You're 83? He said, well, somebody's got to do it. It needs to be done. I'm just telling you, friends, if you're willing to work, it's a good thing to labor. And there is no labor that's more rewarding than working for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. There is no labor more rewarding than loving people, trying to reach people with the gospel. There's no labor that's more satisfying, more fulfilling. It just, there's nothing that even compares to it. So I say this, whatever your job is, yeah, that's important, but that ain't, that ain't the main thing. The main thing is, wherever you find yourself, if you're sitting in a bank and you're a teller or you're a plumber or you're in construction or you work at Walmart or you work at a dairy, make it your mission field to reach people for Jesus. There's no shame in work. And could I just tell you this? I thank God that my mom and dad did not portray the ministry as something that was hard and not rewarding. I, 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 they talk about preacher's kids being the worst. I'm a preacher's kid. And, and I've looked at this honestly, and I think one of the reasons why, because... Many pastors and pastors' wives, they've, they've experienced the hurt and the betrayal and people turning on them and talking about them and splitting churches and all the stuff that comes along with it. They've experienced all that and they've grown bitter. And their kids see this. 
they see this image on Sunday a preacher getting up and preaching a message and then they talk bad about the people all week long and they have just a, a, just a negative spirit about it. Brothers and sisters, amen, it's an honor to work for God. I've heard my dad say this a thousand times. I'd have to step down to be the President of the United States of America. The greatest honor you can have in your life is to be a laborer in His vineyard. Amen. If you could turn one soul from hell and they go to heaven, amen, a thousand years from now, you can know that you did something worthwhile with your life. Amen. If you gain this whole world and all its riches and you take trips and you have fine boats and cars and houses and you don't do nothing for God, it was a wasted life. But if you can get a burden for a co-worker, and it keep you up at night and you pray and you say, God, save them some way and get through to them. And you carry that burden and you love them and you keep dripping on them and you love them and you keep loving them. If they give their lives to Jesus, you've done something worthwhile with your life. So no, I don't feel like I've been mistreated. They killed my master. And what did he say? He said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. I said to those 500 plus truckers at Bobby Hankins' funeral, I said, I have literally had dreams of preaching to 500 truckers. I had no idea it would be in this setting but I've had dreams of preaching to you guys. Brother Bloom, I haven't said this publicly, but I have dreams of your family sitting beside you on that pew. I do. I get to praying sometimes and I see them there. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. I've already talked about this at the beginning. But if you can find yourself in a place of contentment, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6 and 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. What is contentment? My wife and I was asking her what her perspective, from a woman's perspective, what does contentment mean to a woman? And it means something that's, Similar, but a little bit different to a woman, I think. A woman's perspective is contentment is, is tied to a sense of security. And security is established in trusting God. And for a man, a man's wired to provide for his family, protect his family, and, and, and to, to be that, that, that hunter. And, uh, and, and, and we're wired differently, but, but, but contentment for a man is in many cases out in the world it's it's achievements it's a, it's a status it's a, it's a, an income level and and then I can be content but we know it's an illusion we know it's an illusion because when you get there it's something else it's something else it's something else but contentment amen is really coming to rest in your spirit it's coming to rest in your spirit I asked my wife, I said, uh, what connection do you think that gratitude has with contentment? And we talked about it, uh, and she gave me her perspective, and I, I, I shared with her what I, what I th thought of it. But, but I, said, I said to her this, I, as I think about it, you can have gratitude without contentment, but you cannot have contentment without gratitude. And let me explain. Gratitude is foundational to being content. Because if you're not content, that's a sign that gratitude has not been established in your heart. You see, you can't be truly thankful, as my dad says, without depravity. But when you get gratitude as a foundation in your life, and I know I'm getting a little technical right here, but, 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 but just hear me out. Godliness with contentment is great gain. How do we get to contentment? Contentment is achieved 
I, I said to my wife, I think that gratitude comes and goes. Gratitude, we, we get up, it's a beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Gratitude, to some degree, is tied to our surroundings, right? We're grateful for things. We're grateful I had the strength to go work this week. We're grateful for our health. We're grateful for our family. We're grateful for, for, for all this. We're thankful. We have a spirit of gratitude. Contentment is something that rises out of a grateful spirit that says, I do not have to have any more in order to be content. Contentment is not saying, okay, I park here, I'm retiring, I'm not going to strive anymore. That's not contentment. Amen? But there's a paradigm shift. I don't strive to achieve. I strive because I want Him to get glory. I strive because I want to reach my potential for Him. I want Him to receive the reward of His suffering. My striving is not so I can achieve a status. I can achieve a pleasure. I can achieve a, a, a something, some goal. That's not, I, I don't have to strive any longer. Have you ever said something like this to the Lord? Lord, if you don't answer any more prayers, you've answered enough that I should be able to be content. I told my wife this this morning, and I'll just say this to all you ladies. When you are happy and you are content, it brings your husband great, great pleasure. You ever wonder why God said that your thankfulness, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you? In all things, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. When we are happy, when we are contented, when we are contented, we bring Him glory. You know what we're saying? We're saying, my God is enough. So when Moses said, and he was content to dwell with him in the wilderness, you know what he was saying? I don't have to have the palace to find my self-worth. I don't have to have somebody waiting on me hand and foot to feel like that my, wife, my life is significant. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. If you're a child of God, if you've been forgiven of your sins and Jesus Christ has covered you with His blood and you are going to heaven and you're not going to hell, I'm going to tell you something. You've got enough right there. Because all this other stuff, libels to stick around, but more often than not, it's going to fade. Your good looks is going to fade. Sorry to bust your bubble there. I think it's ridiculous, these... 80-year-old women getting their lips done and all this. I mean, just let the wrinkles come and smile. Amen? Listen, brothers and sisters, contentment comes out of a spirit of gratitude. I am truly thankful in my heart of hearts. Lord, you don't have to just keep showering me. You know, it's immaturity to say, who gets the most joy out of Christmas? The little kids. It's for them. They get the presents. They the do Hey. Anyway, last point. How many of you can say praise God for the last point? There you go. I don't take any offense to that. The last point is this. I'm preaching to you about I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place when I'm in the house of God. I'm in a good place when I'm in a place of hunger for more of God. I'm in a good place when I find myself in a place of growth. And I'm in a good place when I find myself being humbled. I'm in a good place when I find myself a place to labor. And I'm in a good place when I'm content. And the last point is, I'm in a good place when I put myself in a place where I can have an encounter with Jesus. Robert and Bianca, you were so blessed that you put in the work to develop enough Understanding, enough desire, enough insight to know that when trouble came, you knew where to go. Oh, I tell you what, I wish it would have happened years ago, but I'm so happy that it happened. I thought of old Zacchaeus. 
in Luke chapter 19, verse 1, the Bible says, And Jesus, entering and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man among men named Zacchaeus, which was of the chiefs among the publicans, and he was rich, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little, in st- little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up in a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Amen. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if it's a sycamore tree, if that's where the Lord's going to be passing by, that's the best place to be. It's your front row seat to see the Lord. Amen. In Mark chapter 2, in verse 4, Mark 2 and 4, the Bible says, And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them of the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. I'm telling you, where's the best place to be? Wherever you're going to have an encounter with Jesus, that's the best place to be. If it's up in a tree, amen, then so be it. If it's on top of the roof, so be it. Amen. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 9, Luke Luke 10 and 9, And he healed the sick that are therein, and said unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto thee. I told that lady yesterday, as I stood in the doorway there, and I talked to her, I said, God must really love you. Because he moved on my heart to come by your house. Brother Robert, God must really love them folks downtown because he moves on your heart to go and preach the gospel to them. The kingdom of God comes nigh them. Wherever you go, Brother West, the kingdom of God's coming nigh to people if you're representing the Lord. Amen. Hey, Brother Eddie, every time you knock on them doors on Saturday... The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is coming nigh to people. You don't realize it, but Sister Sori, several years ago, when you went to that garage sale or that yard sale and Natalie Holden was there, the kingdom of God came nigh to you. And then the last thing is this, the very the last of the last thing is this. You're in a good place when you find yourself at an altar. What's the altar for? Sacrifices. It's a place to die. That's what the altar was designed for. I've heard all these preachers talk about the altar's a place of worship, this, that, and the other. The altar's a place to die. It's a good place to be when you die to yourself. That old song that the Hensons used to sing. Lock me up in a prison. But as long as I know Jesus, I can still go free. I thought about that this morning when my dad asked Sister Jeanette, how's Vanessa doing? Is she still serving God? See, if she makes heaven, that prison can't hold her.
I'll tell you something, brothers and sisters. I don't know where you find yourself today. But if you find yourself hungry for God, you're in a good place. If you find yourself, I mean really being in the house of God, not just flirting with it, but I mean you're really here. Like, like Robert and Bianca, they're really here. If you find yourself in the house of God, you're in a good place. You women, boy, I tell you what, I feel sorry for y'all. Your hormones get out of whack. And y'all are the most unstable things ever. Can't determine if you want to be hot or cold or happy or sad or mad or glad. Just grab an emotion as it comes by. (laughs) But I'm going to tell you something. Life is unstable. Feelings and emotions are unstable. Hormones are unstable. The economy is unstable. The political scene's unstable. Everything's unstable. And by the way, women, would y'all just have a little mercy on us? God called us to love y'all and live with you after understanding, and that was the hardest job you ever put on man. So y'all give us a little grace, okay? But when this life is over and it's all done, there's one place I want to be, Sister Sori. I want to be on that side that the Lord says, well done. Enter in to the joys of the Lord. So are you in a good place today? Ladies, Are you in a good place? Are you in a good place mentally? (laughs) Are you in a good place emotionally? Are you in a good place spiritually? Men, how about it? Are you chasing the rainbow, the bass boat? Are you chasing the pleasure, the new car, the old car? (laughs) Are you in a good place spiritually? None of us, I don't think, are where we want to wind up yet, right? We're not not there yet. But I'm in a good place. Brother Devin, I believe my heart is true. I believe my faith is still strong. I believe. That God has got me in His hand. And like I told that lady yesterday when I knocked on her door, I said, I told her, I told her words similar to this. I can't think of the exact words, but I said, you know what I derive my, 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 my joy from is knowing that God orchestrated all this. He began to deal with my heart several, several months ago. And I began to have a burden for you guys. And I've been praying for you. And I came by today and it didn't look like anyone was home. I knocked on the door. I had a card. I was ready to put it in the door. And she had just got out of the shower and she hollered through a window. She said, hey, pastor, hang on. Give me a minute. And I'm just standing there waiting. She got dressed. She came to the door. And I had about a five-minute interaction with her just standing there at the door. God has plans. I don't want to miss them, Brother Eddie, because I was somewhere else when I should have been at his beck and call. Stand with me if you would. Amen. Are you in a good place today? Are you in a good place I had said to you earlier in this message, when you find yourself in a place of humility, you're in the best place.